Have you ever wondered why electric car manufacturers don't just cover their entire car in solar cells so that when it's sitting here in the sunshine, it just charges itself? Well, today we're going to answer that question. Covering the entire car with solar cells seems like a great idea, but let's dig into the numbers and see what it looks like. Now, obviously, I didn't ruin my car by covering it in solar cells. But today, we're going to simulate it. We're going to see exactly how much energy the sun would deliver to the car if it was parked up in a car park for a couple of hours. And we'll see how many miles of extra range we can add to the car during that time. So the first thing to do is to map out the different areas of the car and see exactly how many solar cells we could get onto each part of the bodywork. This will help give us an idea of what the total generation of the car is, and that will help us size a portable solar panel that will give us a rough equivalency of the amount of power that we would get if we had the panels on the car versus in a standalone panel. So let's start with the roof. Now, on my car, I have a glass roof, but I'm going to assume that the roof is fair game. In fact, it's probably the best part of the car to actually mount solar panels on. So for the roof, we've got approximately 2.5 square meters of space that we could install our cells on. The bonnet, or the hood as the Americans like to call it, that would give us 1.5 square meters of space, and the tailgate, or the trunk, uh, would give us a further 1.2 meters. Then each side of the car, all the way down, if we used all of that space, we would have another approximately 2 meters per side of the car. Now, we're not going to take all of that and add it together because the sun doesn't shine on all parts of the car equally. So we've got to do some maths to figure out exactly how much sunshine we would get onto the car during a particular period of the day. Now also, where you are in the world, this is going to change. So this is just a simulation. Don't take any of these numbers seriously. If you want to, I'm happy to provide you with the, the calculations that I used to get to these numbers. But roughly here in Cambridge in early April, we're looking at an irradiance, so that's the amount of energy that's landing uh, on the ground from the sun, of about 300 watts per meter square. Now, if we do some back of the napkin maths on this, um, we can work out that roughly to simulate this, we're gonna need a solar panel in the 380 to 400 watt range. Now, we're also going to make an assumption that our car is parked in a car park or on a driveway with no obstructions, with a perfect south-facing aspect, so that the sun is landing on the car directly from the south. And we're going to leave it for two solid hours. So maybe simulate a shopping trip or somewhere where the car is going to be parked and sat still for two hours. And we're going to run that from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., which in theory should give us the best possible generation during the day. So how are we going to test this? Well, let me introduce you to a new sponsor to the channel, a company called Afury. Afury makes surprisingly affordable portable power station solutions. If you're into camping or RVing or you're going off grid or you just need power somewhere where mains electricity is not available, then this is an ideal solution for you. Now, they've kindly provided me with their latest generation portable power station, the AFP2100. This is a two kilowatt portable power station. That means it can store two kilowatt hours of energy. The unit itself can output up to 2400 watts continuously. So for most applications, you're going to find this is more than enough. Now, just to be clear, they haven't asked to review this video. They haven't given me anything that I need to say. In fact, Everything in this video that you're seeing, they're seeing at exactly the same time. Now, I've been testing with this unit now for a couple of weeks, so everything I'm about to tell you about it are my own opinions. Now, let's take two minutes and let me show you around the P210. As I said, it has a capacity of 2,048 watt hours, or roughly two kilowatt hours. Its AC inverter can output a maximum of 2,400 watts through a pure sine wave inverter. That means that you shouldn't get into any issues plugging this into just about any domestic appliance. And later on today, I'm going to show you how we're going to plug it into the car and we're going to charge the car from it. It uses a lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry. That means that you can charge and discharge this uh, thousands of times. In fact, up to 4,000 full cycles, and they will guarantee that it still has 85% of its original capacity. Now, there are four ways you can charge this device. 
You can charge it from AC power. So if you are on a tariff where you get cheap power at night, you could import power and store it in the battery. You can obviously charge it from solar, which is what we're gonna be doing today. You can plug it into your car. So if you have a car with an alternator, maybe don't do it with an electric car because all you're doing is transferring the power from one battery to another. But if you have a car with an alternator, you can plug it into what used to be called the cigarette lighter socket, which is now the 12 volt socket, and you can charge it from there. And more importantly, you can charge it from AC and solar at the same time. Now it has a whole raft of outputs. There are three standard UK plugs on one side. You've got multiple USBs with power delivery and anything up to 100 watts. So you should be able to charge all of your devices and most of them at the same time. So what's our plan for this unit? Well, we're gonna set up the portable solar panel that they sent with the unit, which is a 400 watt panel. In fact, it's not one single panel, it's multiple panels that fold out, which you'll see in a moment. We're gonna set up the portable panel and we're gonna charge the P210 for two solid hours at the height of the day. And then when we've completed the test, we're gonna empty the battery and we're gonna empty it all into the car. Now, for the purposes of this test, I have run the battery in the power station completely flat. So there is no energy in there. Everything that we're gonna put into that battery today is gonna to come directly from the sun. Then we're gonna discharge that power into the car using the car's mobile connector. Now, there are gonna be some losses here because obviously we're getting DC energy from the battery. We're turning it into AC using the inverter in the power station. We're then taking it through the portable connector into the car as AC, which is then converting it back into DC to store in the batteries. So we're probably gonna have about a 10% loss. But the critical way we're gonna measure this is how much extra range can we put on the car with this two hours of solar charging? This should give us a really close approximation of what the car would generate itself if, as we saw earlier, it was covered in solar cells. So let's get things set up. So here we have our 400 watt portable solar panel. We'll drop down there. And here is the power station. Now, as I mentioned, this is a two kilowatt unit. As you can see, it comes with two nice grab handles on the side there, makes it very, very easy to lift. All of the outputs that you're gonna need for things like USB charging are all on the front here. There's even a light, so if you are the, of the persuasion of people that go camping, um, you can actually light up the area around it. And we also have two other outputs here. We have a DC output and another one there, which is an XT60 connector. Okay, let's start with the portable solar panel. So on the front here, we have a nice uh, waterproof pouch that keeps all our cables in. We'll leave those, uh, those done up for now. And we can then unfurl our panel. Now it's important to get this the right way up because every other panel has a stand on the back that will pull out like this. So again, if you get them up the wrong way, this won't do you much good. But the panel itself just concertinas out. There is some Velcro that holds it together. And again, we can get our stand positioned. Now these stands can be a little bit fiddly if you're doing it on your own. Um, obviously, if there's two people, it will make life a little bit easier for you. The Velcro is very strong, so once they reattach, um, you've got to give them a good pull to get them off again. Let's get our panel roughly orientated to the direction that we want. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, let's get our compass app. And make sure that we're pointing in the right direction. So actually we wanna orientate the panels more that direction there. So let's take this edge, we'll move those out like so. Oh, 
Okay. Now, let's undo our cables from the pouch that I mentioned earlier. Now you see here, we've got a pretty long cable, a good couple of meters. Um, these start, this terminates in MC4 connectors. Then in the box, you will also get a cable that converts MC4 into an XT60 connector. And this is how we're gonna plug it into the power station. Just to show that the battery is empty before we start the test, you can see here 0%. So lots of space for all that gorgeous solar power. Two hours later. So that's been two solid hours. Looking at the battery, we're at about 29%. Let's get it plugged into the car and let's see how many miles of range that's going to give us. So that's been two solid hours sitting out in the sun and we've gone from zero to 29%. Now I don't think that's going to give us too many miles. But before we plug it in, let's jump in the front of the car and let's see how many miles the car is showing before we start to charge it. Okay, so the way we're going to connect this is using the AC connections on the side, using the mobile charger that came with the car. So for anyone who's familiar with these, these are sometimes known as granny connectors. I don't honestly know what granny did to warrant this being named after her. These are generally used as a charger of last resort. And as you can see, I use mine so often that the cable is all tangled up. But, okay. Let's plug this into the AC connections on the side here. Now that we're plugged in, all we need to do is press the button on the side to turn on the AC supply. This will turn on the inverter. We get a little sine wave symbol on the front there. And it currently says 31 hours. That's about to change. So we will open up our charge port. We'll plug the car in. And in just a few seconds, we'll start to see the output ramping up. So we're outputting 2,340 watts and it says it's going to take approximately 13 minutes to run down. So let's come back in 13 minutes and see how many miles we've added to the car. So we'll go from 251 to probably 252 or 253. A few minutes later. So let's see what we got for our money. Well, it looks like we added two miles of range for our two hours of charging. So that's it. Two hours of charging in the sun delivered two miles of range. This is why we don't cover our cars in solar panels because there just isn't enough surface area that the sun can land on to give a meaningful range update. Even if we were doing DC to DC, we maybe get 10% more. So maybe we'd get another 0.2 of a mile out of our charge. So I hope you found this interesting. It was a pointless exercise to start with, but I thought it was a good way of illustrating the reasons why electric cars don't have solar panels all over them. And a huge thank you to A3 for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in this, I will add more details in the description of this video. Check out their website and see what you think. With that, I'm going to sign off. It just remains for me to say thank you very much for clicking on this video. I hope you take it in the lighthearted spirit that it was meant. And I'll hopefully see you all back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye-bye.